All right, everybody. Um, hello again. Welcome back. So this is uh, my second session, and it's about a head-mounted wearable device called a site. Um, if you have never seen or used a wearable device, I just want to take a couple of minutes to explain what that is. So wearable devices, actually, if you, if you listen to the people that kind of know a lot about these things, uh, they've been around for I think since the 1960s, actually, NASA invented the first so-called wearable device um, to help with simulation uh, work for astronauts. Uh, in terms of wearable devices for, for kind of the general public, I'm holding a virtual reality wearable device in front of me right now. I actually have another device that looks just like this on a tripod in front of me, and it's specially modified so I'm using it as my web camera. So what you're seeing right now, if there's a little bit of lag, the lag is not because of Zoom, but because of the way the device is connected to the computer through Wi-Fi. So, um, but hopefully you're hearing my audio through the, uh, the Zoom meeting, so that should be fine. So if you think about it, I'm just gonna take my glasses off, although it's not necessary. So the way a, um, a virtual reality system works. You might have, if you've ever walked past a Microsoft store in the mall, um, you might sometimes see uh, people using them. They, they're used for games. So if I put the device on my head, you'll see that the device, if I turn sideways, is flush against my face um, and the strap goes on my head to hold it in place. And most people are using those sorts of virtual reality glasses for video game playing. Well, for the last three years or so, there have been wearable devices for people who are visually impaired. You may have heard of some of them. I think in terms of low vision, probably one of the first that I remember hearing about was eSight from a company by the same name in Canada. Um, there are other devices like uh, Iris Vision, New Eyes, Patriot Viewpoint, and then our brand name, which is ASight. So our first wearable ASight, uh, which is still available, uses augmented reality. Augmented reality is not the same as the device that I'm holding here. Augmented reality is actually a very open architecture which does not press against the face the way this one does. The peripheral vision is still there, which means that you could in fact walk around while wearing the device. Walking while wearing a virtual reality unit is absolutely not safe and should not be attempted. You don't have any peripheral vision, your depth perception is off, it's not good. But if you're seated and you're using this for watching television or looking at a computer or something like that, perfectly fine. Um, if I just hold the device a little closer, so get my left and right mixed up. So in front of what would be my left, your right, is where the camera is located. So the camera is actually provided by, a, there's, a, there's essentially a mobile phone inside this VR unit. This camera is 48 megapixels, which is approximately four times stronger. And I can see that the image is just lagged and stopped all of a sudden. So just give it a second, it'll catch up. So the camera is 48 megapixels and the image quality that you're seeing, I would say probably looks better when I'm wearing the, the magnifier on my head versus what is being shown on the screen. The, the image looks a little brighter actually. Other than the on off switch on the top of the device, there isn't anything else to worry about with the headset. Control of the unit is done with this Bluetooth wireless controller. There is a lanyard that you can attach to this controller, so you can wear it around your neck, and don't lose it. I'm gonna switch on the controller. Just give it a second. All right, so now it's live. So there are two buttons and a joystick on the top of the controller, and at the front there's a trigger. I'll explain how. <coughs> so, if I want to make my image larger, I simply push the joystick away from me with my thumb. And as I do, you will see in the lower part of the screen, 
a brief symbol that tells me what magnification level I am at. So if I keep going, I'm presently at 3.2x. The device can magnify up to 16 times. Uh, the button at the bottom, so as I'm looking down on the top of the, of the, of the handheld remote, the button at the bottom, the button at the bottom, try and say that fast, uh, if I press it, we'll switch to high contrast mode. And as I step through, there are four different modes all together. So there, there was the um, black with white, either inverse or normal, and black with yellow. You can hide those high contrast colors if you don't need them, don't want them, don't like them. That's entirely up to the user. Uh, if I go into one of those high contrast modes and then move my joystick left or right, you'll notice some circles on the screen that are filling in or emptying depending on what I'm doing. And as I'm doing so, the, the, the contrast of my high contrast mode is changing. Now you wouldn't use high contrast for looking at a scene or a person like I'm doing here. But if I was to hold some text here, you might get, get a better idea of why the uh, high contrast mode when you're using a wearable device is good because when you want to do reading. Just give this a second, seems to have just lagged just a little bit again. All right. If I keep going, eventually we get to the outline mode. So outline mode is unique to the wearable device that, that we make. And there are three different modes. So there's, there's black outlining on a white background, white outlining on a black background, and finally, black outlining on a color background. So with certain eye conditions, this can actually be helpful in just getting the lay of the land in terms of what's in the room. If you are looking for something that is hanging on the wall, I don't know if you can see the, uh, the pictures behind me, um, if, the, if the color of the frame is similar to the color of the wall, it might be hard for some people to see it. Turning on outline can be a, a good way of kind of finding those things. While I would hope that students aren't bringing medications uh, on their own to school, they should be administered by a nurse. One of the best use cases I've heard for the outline mode has been someone that was actually dealing with a, a bottle of, of um, pills at home, dropped one onto their kitchen counter, they couldn't find it. So they use the outline mode with this device. And the, and the outline mode actually drew an outline around this tiny little pill, like an aspirin sized thing. They were able to find it, retrieve it, put it back in the bottle and no harm was done. Um, in terms of the trigger button then, so this is for freezing the image. So if I just press it right now, I can never get myself looking attractive in these frozen images, but anyway, it is frozen on exactly how I was looking when I took the picture. But if this were a, uh, some text on the wall, a notice, something of that nature, uh, I can actually kind of freeze it as I've done here, study it by simply moving the joystick around to kind of move around the screen. And then when I'm done, just press the trigger button again to go back to the live mode. When you're in that frozen image mode, you can invoke that high contrast mode that I was showing before as well. Now, why, why would this be applicable in an educational setting? Well, if you are, if you are working with a student uh, and you are at times their eyes in the room to tell them what's going on or perhaps to read to them something that's going on to help them uh, learn, uh, I'm not trying to get people not to have their job or anything, but student could potentially be wearing the wearable and then actually uh, be interacting with everything that's going on in the class. They can use it to look at the faces of people, uh, look at the board, read their textbook, uh, whatever it is that they are trying to do at that time. 
I already mentioned that in, in, in terms of virtual reality headsets like this, it's not safe to walk around in. That, so if, you, if the student was gonna go from one classroom to the other, the idea is that they would take this off their neck or hang it around their neck uh, and then walk to class and then put it back on again for the next lesson. But if they're at home, the wearable, <coughs> The wearable is great for working with a computer. It's great for watching television. Um, it's great for reading sheet music, um, interacting with other people in terms of seeing people's faces and so forth. I, I hope you would agree that, you know, the image quality of what we're seeing here isn't that different really in terms of like my skin tone and everything else than if I was just using a regular webcam. I mean, the image quality really is very, very good. Of course, if I zoom in, I, you know, it, you'll, you may notice that the image quality does start to degrade when I start to get really far in. So, you know, I'm at 10X right now on my shirt. It's a little pixelated. And, you know, that's to be expected when we are expanding something. Uh, however, what about different eye conditions? What about a person who has a limited field of view. So for the most part, we think about visual acuity for low vision. Usually if someone's visual acuity is 2600 or better, they can uh, get uh, good, good use and benefit out of a wearable device like ASAP. But what about field of view? If the, if the student has retinitis pigmentosa, or they have glaucoma or something else that impacts their peripheral vision, they might not be able to see the entire scene, or in the case of someone's face, they might not be able to see the whole face. What do we do in that case? Well, the button just below the joystick, if I press and hold it, it goes into the main menu of the A site. There's not a lot here, just four things. The, the first option is where we can set our favorite magnification level, and all that means simply is that when you use this A site, if you've determined that six times magnification is your preferred magnification level, or that's the student's preferred magnification level, the device will always be at six times magnification when they use it. Brightness, there are five levels of brightness. The A site will be at the middle level by default. Uh, the only time you should need to change it really is if you are watching TV. Uh, sometimes the TV can get a bit bright, so it's usually advisable to lower the brightness. The middle option is where we can hide or show the high contrast colors if we don't want to see ones that we're not using. But the fourth one across is the one that I want to show you. So I press the trigger button to go in here. Okay. And when I press that trigger button, it goes into something we call narrow mode. So there is an image that's displayed on a site showing three trees. If I hold the trigger and the zoom out button, and I just pull back on the joystick, I can reduce the size of the picture. So what this does is if I was to um, exit out of here, and now I'm back to my live view, you will notice now that instead of seeing me take up more of the screen. Now you're only seeing me in the upper right corner. So we've minified the overall scene into an area. So if I have a limited field of view, this is going to be helpful for me. But you might be asking, well, what if the student doesn't have any peripheral vision? They only see central. It's a great question. So I'm going to go back into the menu. I'm going to go back into the narrow mode. And this time what I'm going to do, hang on, I pressed the wrong button. Sorry. Let me try that one more time. I'm going to use my joystick and I'm going to move that picture and put it right slap bang in the center. The fact is I can move this anywhere I want. Now when I use the A site, my smaller image is going to be in the center. So if I do have that limited field of view, and we've certainly got some customers with single digit uh, degree field of view. So thinking like eight or nine degrees, who when in this mode can see everybody. I can still magnify within this small window. All we're changing is just how much of the available display we're seeing. This narrow mode is also helpful 
you know, again, for just when people have this limited field of view, but also when people have the student or the, the individual has a scotoma on the retina that makes certain areas of their field just black to them. So this allows us to move that picture to somewhere where we can see. I'm gonna go ahead and make that larger again and come out. And now we're back to normal. Uh, so in terms of the A site, that's, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna just stop sharing for a second and come back to Zoom. I'm actually going to disconnect the site and plug back in my web camera. There we go. All right. So, the wearable then. So, the things that you cannot do is don't, don't walk while you're wearing it. It is acceptable, it is acceptable to wear the device outside as long as it's not raining or anything like that. Um, actually, because the nature of the design brings the, the device, it's immersive, brings it close to your face, being outside on a bright sunny day as we're enjoying today in Massachusetts, uh, there's no problem with that at all. Um, in many respects, this is better than wearing sunglasses because you can adjust brightness uh, and be outside and be looking off into the distance as happy as you like. We do have some, some folks that have used or are using a site to watch uh, events outside, either events like theater events or events like sporting events. While that is possible, it is worth noting that if the expectation is that you're gonna sit in the stadium and look 100 yards away at some football game or something like that, you're gonna to have to magnify the image somewhat and you're really not gonna be able to follow an awful lot. So in terms of setting reasonable expectations, that's not what the, design, what the device is designed for. But if what folks are interested in is looking at the board, looking at the computer, looking at other people, using it to read print curriculum that we happen to have in our possession, or the mail or something like that, then these devices are very, very good for that. In terms of price, so this particular device is $2,500. Um, the other models of a site that I mentioned that we, that we have, that we make, are the open augmented reality versions. Those are about $3,000 or $4,000 depending on the model. But for most folks that don't need or are not planning to go walking while wearing the device, this virtual reality unit is, is the favorite unit right now. The image quality is very, very good. It's extremely easy to use. I mean, you've, you've basically been trained in how to use this device. I've shown you everything that it can do. Um, there's really nothing left. Um, and uh, what else can I tell you? It is available from our distributors around the country. We also work with a growing network of optometrists, eye doctors who specialize in low vision. They're in different parts of the country. Um, so if you have any interest in this type of product, you can certainly reach out to us um, afterwards. We're at zoomax zoomaxusa.com. Uh, this session has been recorded and will be available for you to watch later if you did want to kind of catch the highlights again. Um, let me just look, there's a couple of questions coming through. So the question was that I had mentioned using Wi-Fi when I was using it to stream the image from the A site to the computer and does the user need internet access to use it? Great question. No, you do not need internet access. In fact, Wi-Fi on the device is switched off and is not something you can switch on. So Wi-Fi is off, airplane mode is on all the time. So this device is certainly safe to use even if you were in an airplane, you could be uh, you know, wearing it while at your seat. Um, so no, no, no internet access. There's, uh, and that's actually good, I think, from, from the perspective of just security. There are some devices that do have the ability to stream videos from YouTube. Uh, we don't have any of that. Uh, we've been doing this for about three years now. 
And what, you know, the feedback we've gotten is image quality is number one. It is absolutely the single most, you know, important thing for someone with low vision. Being easy to use is also important. And then I guess the third thing is going to be price for a lot of us. I mean, no one comes along telling me money's no object. There's always a budget. Uh, so in that respect, anyway, great question. Thank you for asking. that. Are there any other questions from anybody on the meeting? You can either chat, put your question in the chat window or just unmute yourself and ask me the question. Okay, well, it, I, it would appear there are no other questions at this point. Well, listen, thank you so much, everybody. I know that for most of us, this probably was our very first ever virtual conference. Um, it's uh it's it's been fun this has actually been my first day of uh, attending such a conference and uh it's been been an interesting experience i hope this has been an informative session for everybody thanks so much for your attention have a great rest of the day and uh, be safe take care